KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars uh-huh. Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona electric vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Plus, Aetna continues to owe Guam's public hospital some $2.3 million as contract end nears. Chris Barnett reports. And with the British Royal Navy on island, the Guam Police Department works to ensure safety and security for Guam residents and the over 2,000 sailors. Half a day and good evening. I'm Tyler Matinani. It's back to class on Monday for schools that are ready to return to in-person learning. But for the Guam Department of Education, they're using all next week to ensure all safety measures are in place for the return of face-to-face. -face. Isaiah again reports. Call it the three C's, canopies, cohorts, and cafeteria. The Guam Department of Education will use all of next week to ensure everything is in place for the return of in-person instruction on Monday, September 27th. Deputy Superintendent of Operations, Erica Cruz. And we ordered 276 canopies at $168,581. Uh, we ordered 976 tables and 7,096 chairs at a total of 226,119 and uh, 28 cents. Plexiglass will be in all cafeterias. Canopies constructed outside to help with social distancing and students will return in cohorts, meaning on any given day of in-person learning, half of the student population will be on campus. Unfortunately, there's a fourth C, confusion. GDOE needs more information from public health on a testing plan mandated in the governor's executive order. So the challenge is, I think those, those recommendations and those parameters really need to be set uh, you know, with, uh, by our public health experts because uh, you know, I've, done the, I've done my own research into screening and testing and there needs to be, you know, we need to determine what the right test is. Um, you know, uh, hopefully it's a rapid test if we can, but I mean, what's, what's the right test? Who do we need to, um, you know, to test? How frequently, and and so forth. But um, you know, public health really has to to really come up with this with this recommendations uh, because we also need to find a way to operationalize this uh, in a way that makes sense. Again, we have the capacity, we have the, you know, we have seems like we have the resources. The question is, you know, the what what is the plan? Like, who's going to get tested? On what frequency? You know, at what frequency do you, do we require consent? How do we obtain that consent? As for interscholastic sports, it can resume next Monday. However, effective October 18th, all coaches and athletes 16 years and older must either submit proof of vaccination or submit a weekly negative COVID test result. Spectators will be allowed at the interscholastic sporting events as long as they are in compliance with DPHSS guidelines. Reported for Guam News Network, Guahusi Isaiah Ogun. Next week, all GDOE students will remain in online instruction. Then those students who were initially enrolled in the face-to-face -face will return to in-person cohorts on the 27th. Each school will communicate with parents and students regarding their schedule. Once again, we invite you to voice your view on our Facebook and Instagram with our daily question. Sound off on the issues that matter to you. Today's question, are you ready for a return to the classroom? Is it too soon? We want to hear from you. We'll share some of your responses on the link with Chris and Bree Monday morning. The Guam Memorial Hospital is almost full with a total census of 181 COVID and non-COVID patients. According to GMH spokesperson May Habib, as of this morning, they are providing care to 49 COVID patients. Huge in the grand scheme of Guam being 160,000 people, but uh, for a hospital that, you know, we're already at basically capacity um, and we have holdings in the ER because we don't have enough beds to admit people, five more COVID positives who need very specific care and very specific rooms to be, you know, negative pressure. It is a lot. A total of 14 COVID patients are receiving ICU level of care, which Habib says is their maximum. As for Region Cove, GM, GMH is out of supply, but should be receiving a shipment this week. 
Following up on the team from FEMA and HHS here on Guam to help, Daniel Perez reports. Clinical laboratory scientists Thomas Maruna and June Germain arrived on island last week. They are the first of the FEMA team that's come to aid the island amidst the COVID pandemic. Public Health PIO Janela Carrera gave an update on how they've been helping public health to counter the virus. They arrived and there was actually really no training needed. As soon as they get, it's almost like plug and play. Um, there is really no training. They can come into our lab and they know exactly what to do. Um, and that's the beauty of having them here. And so that really helps us, alleviates the burden on us because we can uh, redistribute our staff and uh, run other specimens at um, uh, other testing. So like, for example, PCR. With the knowledge that Maruna and Jermaine have, they will be able to help public health scientists conduct the test faster and efficiently. Although they will only be here for 30 days, Carrera hopes within that time period, they can assist public health with other COVID related matters. Right now, um, their focus has really just been in helping us with um, running specimens um, and also in collaborating with our, um, our microbiologists and our specialists here at the lab. But for now, the focus is really in just helping us with the volume of tests and specimens that we are receiving, especially as we continue to see the surge. With many people getting tested, Carrera added that having experienced laboratory scientists handling the tests is the best possible way to utilize them in order to distribute other personnel where they are needed most. Right now what they're doing, as you can see behind me, is they're running um, the specimens that were collected from the teeth and test site. And so it's the Abbott ID Now machines that they're running. And, um, you know, the throughput that we see um, on average, especially now during our surge, can go anywhere up to like a thousand a day. So that's a lot of tests to administer, especially when we don't have as many um, medical lab technicians. As we reported, the FEMA team that was delayed is now scheduled to arrive on the 24th. According to Carrera, once they arrive, they will begin to administer the monoclonal antibody treatments to the people who need them. The Mangilao Senior Center will still be used for the MAB treatments. The status of the Regenco shipment is still unknown as of this time. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Daniel Perez. Pay up ASAP. That's the word from the Guam Memorial Hospital to insurance carriers as GMH looks to collect what it's owed so it can pay its bills that it owes. Here's more. Aetna may be about to pack up and split the island, but the global insurance giant will be leaving behind a multi-million dollar balance with the Guam Memorial Hospital. Hospital officials say Aetna owes GMH $2.3 million. As you may recall, Aetna, the sole provider for GovGuam Health Insurance last year. Here's hospital administrator Lillian Posadas. We've submitted our claims to Aetna, but I guess their reimbursement process takes a while. Um, but, you know, they, they need to pay us. And according to GovGuam retiree Joe Cameron, GMH isn't the only one waiting for reimbursements from Aetna. I believe there are still a lot of folks here that have reimbursements that are still lingering um, and that there's this plan is has is ending this month. And so the big question for a lot of folks out there in the Gulf of Guam family, whether you're active or you're retiring, will I ever get paid what I'm supposed to be paid back as reimbursements? It's very, very uh, disconcerting. Perennial payment problem take care owes the hospital a whopping $5.9 million. Take care. Uh, we've been working very closely with take care. We've had to do some uh, reconciliation of past uh, bills and so... <laughs> You know, but Taker has been making the payments, but it will be great if they can give us, pay us what, what they owe us. It will really just be fantastic. So we don't, uh, you know, we can pay the vendors that we owe. Meanwhile, rounding out what other insurance carriers owe the hospital, stay well, 307155 bucks. NetCare owes $12,093. And SelectCare has a credit of $908. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. The British are here. We're zooming in with GPD spokesman Paul Tapao to find out how the Guam Police Department is working to ensure the safety of both the island community and our visitors from the Royal Navy. You're going to see them out in two months. Um, you're going to see DPHSS, along with our, our, our GPD um, counterparts, are going to be visiting the hotels and ensuring that there's an understanding and a reminding, reminding them that, you know, we still have 
to follow the governor's executive orders. GPD spokesman Paul Tapao explains how the Guam Police Department is working hand in hand with the island's leading agencies and the British Royal Navy to ensure safety and security for Guam residents and the 2,200 sailors while docked. We usually coordinate to uh, not just with the Guam Police Department, but also with the uh, you know uh, head officials with the, within the government to include. Uh, those that are uh, associated with the Guam Hotel Restaurant Association. 100 contractors were flown in to perform maintenance work on the ships. Her Majesty's ship, Queen Elizabeth, HMS Kent, HMS Defender, and Royal Fleet Auxiliary Tide Spring. And Royal Fleet Auxiliary Tide Spring will be in Guam's waters until September 26. You're not going to be releasing everybody that's here uh, out and about in Tumon or respectively out and about in town. Tapao ensures that the visiting party is fully aware of the COVID mitigation procedures and the measures Guam is taking to deal with the coronavirus. We also shared, you know, shared with them um, some of the aspects of the uh, executive order that's in play, uh, some of the restrictions that um, are in play with the island. All members of the Royal British Navy have been vaccinated for COVID. Tapao reminds everyone that Guam has been a longtime welcoming port for all kinds of visitors and that the ships will be an opportunity to gauge how the island can reopen. It helps with the economy and it really does, you know, showing our, our, our true holiday spirit to, you know, to our visitors alike. And we just want to remind our, 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 our community out there to please, you know, take care of each other, stay safe and, you know, we can get through this. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. And instant prizes from Foot Locker and Burger King. Win the best-selling 2021 Toyota Corolla LE, the crossover SUV 2021 Toyota RAV4 LE, and the dynamic luxury SUV 2021 BMW X1. The more you shop, the more chance to win. In the Micronesia Malls, shop and win. Our family was recently challenged with a difficult medical condition where my son needed a liver transplant. And I asked Cabo Select Care to assist me with that and, and he required off-island care. In fact, it can only be taken care of off-island. Uh, so Cabo Select Care was there to help uh, with all the referrals and the off-island coverage. Gov Guam employees and retirees, enroll now. Hi, my name is Justine Chu. Jim Pamplona. Alexis Sublan. I'm Minami Kramer. And I'm a GTA youth leader. Um, because of GTA, I was able to go to Interlochen, a summer music camp over the summer. And I'm very, very grateful for that opportunity. It helped me pay for my college tuition with a scholarship. Benefits, including a free phone and a year of free service. If you're someone who wants to inspire others, help others, and become a better person, this is for you. Become a GTA youth leader today. 100% truck, 100% Jeep. Experience next level off-roading on your new Jeep Gladiator, the most capable off-road mid-size pickup truck crafted for adventure, equipped with best-in-class towing capacity, legendary 4x4 Jeep capability, and backed by Guam's only lifetime powertrain warranty. Drive home in a 2021 Jeep Gladiator today, starting as low as $315 per paycheck during Jeep Adventure Days. Visit carsplusguam.com to get pre-approved online today. Terms and conditions apply. Cars Plus, driven by you. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back. A true bill was handed down against Justin Michael Duaneus and Jensen Develis. Although the two were separately charged, the court ruled to combine the cases under one indictment. The two were arrested for a shooting that occurred last month at a home along Tranquilla Court. Duaneus and Develis were both indicted on multiple charges, including attempted murder and aggravated assault. Develis, however, faced additional charges because he allegedly shot at two people and committed a felony while on felony release. In regional headlines, CNMI Governor Ralph Torres responds directly to his Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios' damaging testimony at the legislature on Wednesday. Thomas Manglotnia reports. I didn't throw him under the bus. He ran in front of the bus. Palacio says the governor should speak for himself to clear the air in the legislative probe into his administration's spending. And at a press briefing this morning, Torres sounds off. I've told us in the beginning, 
I said, hey, call me in so we can hash this out and, and answer those questions, the concerns that you have. Yet it's been several months. They never did that. They're choosing to go this route. They brought in officers. They brought in people that are that that are subpoenaing other people. Uh, and yet uh, they haven't called me. So apparently they already have uh, a goal, uh, an agenda before um, all this process. He'll wait until the subpoena, which was approved by the House Committee, reaches his desk. He testified under oath. Would you say that he gave a truthful testimony? Well, um, you know, uh, I guess uh, he's, he'll be, uh, if there's anything that, uh, that uh, is inaccurate or incomplete, then, then we have to see that. Uh, I don't want to be the one to say whether it's accurate or not. Committee Chairwoman Selena Babata says more witnesses are on the way. We still have to go through a few other witnesses uh, for the JGO hearings before we issue the subpoena for the governor. Next Tuesday, we will have um, Gary Camacho, executive director for the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation, and he was issued his subpoena last Friday, a week ago, and um, he. so far we have not received any communication that he will be uh, coming with an attorney or, you know, as with uh, some other witnesses in the past, they have not notified us whether they will be speaking in vernacular or in English. She says they'll have questions about utility bills in the thousands for the governor's home and other accounts under his name. Island Media asked Torres if he's considered resigning. Absolutely not. Tomas Mangwanya for KUAM News. The Chamber of Commerce is still waiting to hear back from Adeloupe on yet another plea to roll back the business privilege tax. Chamber President Catherine Castro says so many small businesses continue to struggle. We just need a little bit of support. And, and to us, that it, it, it um, is a small bit, but it would mean so much. The private sector has really uh, uh, stretched itself thin uh, people uh, businesses have closed people have lost jobs or we still have over 10,000 people without jobs uh, we need to do something the business privilege tax was raised in 2018 from four percent to five in response to the trump tax cuts and the projected loss in local government revenues it was supposed to be a temporary increase but the governor has said she opposes a rollback and attempts by the legislature have also failed Castro says since the pandemic, GovGuam has benefited from hundreds of millions in federal assistance. It's been business as usual. She says now it's time to let businesses keep more of their own money. We're just saying, hey, you're able to operate. So can you support the private sector so that we can um, be able to survive? Our source markets are still closed, right? Um, our tourism uh, our, our tourism industry needs uh, needs dire support. Our private sector needs dire support. And, and to us, this is a small way that the government of Guam can support um, our economy. For many businesses, a 25% reduction in the VPT is a matter of survival. That's why Castro says the chamber will continue to push for it. We just are asking our elected officials to support us. For Guam's News Network, I'm Esther Lacanto. We reached out to Adeloupe, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker for comment. So far, all have declined. Coast 360 Federal Credit Union celebrated a new milestone today at the Harmon Industrial Park with a groundbreaking ceremony of its second member center. CEO Haner Delakina spoke about what members of the bank can expect from this. This member center is slated to replace our time winning member center with a state of the art much larger footprint that includes brand new service elements such as a 24-7 convenient banking center that allows our members to conduct transactions like cash withdrawals with selectable denominations, mixed deposits of cash and checks, account-to-account -account transfers, pin change, loan payments through account transfers or cash deposits. They even can get their own mini account statements. They can split their deposits and they can do check cashing. 
Also present at the event was Coast 360 Chairman of the Board Paul Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio, who, spo who spoke about how the credit union has helped them and the island with loans and other money matters. Both said that generations of families have helped have been helped by the credit union to find prosperity in these trying times over the years. The building housing, the building housing the longtime headquarters of the Bank of Hawaii's Guam branch has been sold. Private holding company Citadel Pacific, which is also the parent company of ITNI, IPNI, and Fujita Properties, announced the purchase of the 62,000 square foot property at West Soledad Avenue in Hagatnya. Citadel is a diversified private company with operations in Guam, the Sinai, Palau, the Philippines, Hong Kong, and Macau. Meanwhile, in a statement on its website, the Bank of Hawaii said it plans to build a new West Pacific Regional Headquarters in Tumuning, which will include a new branch. Construction is scheduled to start in late 2022. Sports is up next and still to come your Cold Stone Creamery birthday shout outs. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. When making the new Kentucky Fried Chicken sandwich, people asked how I felt about burger places selling fried chicken. I'd say that's none of my business. Just like making fried chicken is none of theirs. Get the new Kentucky Fried Chicken Sandwich. It's finger licking good. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, over 20 years of experience. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Darren Cepeda, quarterback, senior at Le Center, playing for the Wildcats in Washington against Woodland High. You had 224 yards passing, 171 yards rushing. You combined for a total of five touchdowns. We knew that um, going into that game that, you know, it was going to be much tougher. It was going to be much tougher because they're coming off a loss and, you know, they obviously want to win because they had a, a downfall in the spring and they didn't really, didn't really do too well. So we knew that they were going to be tougher. So we just had to put our, put our foot on the gas pedal all throughout the game. Style of offense that you guys run and how it helps you with your skill set, both being able to run and pass. Style of offense is a uh, RPO based. It's run pass option based, based around you know whether we need to read read the defensive ends or um, read the safety's eyes. You know I feel like our offense has really grown over the years since I got here my freshman year, just because of different capabilities. My my quarterback last year, who's a uh, uh, poor, uh, he plays for Portland State. He's a, uh, he he really like like mentored me well and like took me under his wing and showed me like how to run the offense. Former Washington State Player of the Year as well, Tom Lambert. So yeah, I, I I've had I had I've had a great group of guys that I was surrounded by that you know took me under their wings and she really showed me the offense that the center Wildcats football runs. You also play a lot on the defensive side of the ball, uh, playing corner and safety. Your dad and your brother in your corner helping you out along the way. It's definitely great having them, you know, being able to talk to them after practice, you know, after a big game. You know, just giving, just giving me always insights on what I could do better or what I did wrong or what I, what I did well throughout the game. And, you know, 
these guys, these guys always push me. My dad always pushes me. Obviously, he's my defensive back coach. My brother, you know, I can relate to him a lot because of uh, what he did in Guam and you know All Island multiple times. So, you know, it's, it's it really helps me a lot, and I, you know, I couldn't be more thankful. Your team's looking at making a run for state this year. I couldn't say this more. This is one of the best teams that the Center Wildcat football program has had. And the coaches say it to us, but every week we go into each week with the zero, with zero wins and zero loss mentality because we know that we have a target on our back, ranked number six in Class 1A Washington. You know, these next three games are going to be really tough, especially against good teams like um, Kalama High School. They're ranked number one in their class, which is 2B. And then um, we have the number two ranked, Edenville Crusaders, and then number five ranked uh, Montesano um, Bearcats. In programming news, make sure to catch some NFL action this Monday, September 20th at 3 in the morning. The Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Keep it locked to KUAM TV 11 at 625 in the morning. The Dallas Cowboys meet up with the Los Angeles Chargers. Then at 1020 in the morning on KUAM TV 8. It's the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Baltimore Ravens for some Sunday night football. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Building on the past, we at Docomo Pacific Business believe in helping businesses move forward and together, changing the way we get things done to make you and your company reach your highest potential. Trust in our commitment to bring you the best solutions for all your business goals. We are Docomo Pacific Business. Let's work better together. Half a day. Hi. That will be $20, please. I forgot my Mobile Smiles Drivers Rewards card. No worries. You can now use your registered mobile number to earn points. Can I use my mobile number to redeem rewards? Sure. Just show us your photo ID or driver's license. That's easy. Goes office party on demand promotion. Check out the final winner from Docomo Pacific. On Wednesday, Uno Go made a very special delivery to Docomo Pacific located in the Agana Shopping Center. To this week's winner, Tech Zone representative Jonathan Mendula. Just wanted to try my luck, you know, win some free food. Lunch, which was comprised of some of Ajisen's popular items, was delivered hot and fresh to Mandola and some of his fellow co-workers who were happy to indulge in the awesome food. It's pretty awesome. Um, it's a good experience. I felt really good. Um, not every day you win free food and I get to share it with these guys, so yeah, it's good. Congratulations again, Jonathan. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. It's September 17th, everybody. So happy birthday to John Castor. Have a happy and healthy birthday, my dear son. You are loved today, tomorrow, and always. Hope your day is as wonderful as you are. This is coming from mom and dad. Jada Rosa Blonde Diego, love, kisses, and hugs from your whole family and wishing you a happy, blessed birthday. Please enjoy your special day, and we wish you many more to come. Happy birthday number one to Nalea Malina Mino Santos. Happy first birthday to our granddaughter, and happy birthday to the sweetest one-year-old girl that we have known. Aw, you have graced our lives for over a year now, and every day with you is a priceless present for us. Watching you grow has been the best sight of our lives. Love, very, very proud, Gammy and Papa. Mike Malolo Madness down there, great job. 
<laughs> Kiara Mae Uggin, hey little girl, you're not so little anymore. Mom, dad, and your family are wishing you much love on your birthday number 17. They say happy birthday and they're proud of you. And happy birthday to our baby boy, Cody Frank Guerrero. We love you and we hope you enjoy your special day. It's a great day to have a birthday this year, everybody. Please be safe and have a great, fantastic day because today is all about you. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online at KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birth date. And it is that time of the week where we announce the winner of a yummy Cold Stone Creamery cake. Your winner this week is Manuel John Chong Salas. I remember reading this. Manuel was born on September the 12th, and we wish you and your family good health. Please be safe. Have a wonderful extended weekend, and we'll be in contact with you to let you know when you can pick up your Cold Stone Creamery ice cream cake. Happy birthday once again. That's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Thanks for watching. Have a good night and a safe weekend.